What's up, everybody, and welcome to the premiere episode of Final Drive. I'm famous, and today we're driving this, the Toyota Corolla SE. Let's get it. For 2019, the Corolla is available in six trim levels, ranging from L to XSE, and priced between $18,000 and $23,000. Today, I am testing the SE trim in Falcon Gray Metallic. It is powered by a 1.8 liter, four cylinder dual overhead cam engine with Toyota's variable valve timing with intelligence, producing 132 horsepower and 128 foot pounds of torque. Fuel efficiency is 28 city, 35 highway, and 30 miles per gallon combined. 17 inch machined alloy wheels with black painted accents wrapped in low-profile, all-season tires, 10.8-inch ventilated front discs, and 10.2-inch solid rear disc brakes with Toyota's Star Safety System, which is a suite of safety features standard across all Corolla trim levels. Independent McPherson strut suspension up front and a torsion beam rear suspension out back with stabilizers on both, and heated power mirrors with turn signal indicators. The SE has multi-LED headlights that I love and LED daytime running lights which I don't love so much. The vertical design's a little wonky and the black striations are purely cosmetic. Which now brings me to the front fascia. Toyota says this car's good looks just can't be ignored. Are we looking at the same car? That grille looks ridiculous, and painting it gloss black doesn't make it any better. It looks like a huge portion of the bumper is missing. While the mesh does add a sporty touch, it's blocked around the edges. What's the point in that? The mesh is there to let air flow in, not block it out. At the rear, we have combination tail lights with LED backup lights. Really? Only LED reverse lights? Come on, Toyota. No points for finishing halfway. And what's with this fake carbon fiber trim at the bottom? I know you're going for a sporty look, but you know what would look sporty? Real carbon fiber. And before I forget, the satellite radio antenna is not color matched. <sighs> Moving to the interior, I totally dig the steering wheel. It has a sporty three-spoke design that is leather wrapped with thumb grips. Thumb grips? So many automakers neglect this sporty little touch. The steering wheel has both tilt and telescopic adjustability, paddle shifters, and it has all the navigation controls you need to manage everything from the multi-information display to the dynamic radar cruise control. The gauge cluster sports a 4.2 inch color multi-information display so you can adjust all the various settings from the trip computer to the safety tech. The tachometer and speedometer have a chrome bezel that exudes a premium feel that really pops. However, it's difficult to tell when you're going 30, 50, or 70 miles per hour at a glance. I would have liked those indicators a tad bolder, and while we're at it, how about a sportier font? But then again, this is a Corolla. This SE comes equipped with the premium package, which includes a 7.1 inch Intune Audio Plus touchscreen display with navigation, integrated rear view backup camera, and push button start. The automatic climate control sits just beneath the main display where you can adjust the AC temperature using these awesome horizontal levers. Also, there's an available 12 volt auxiliary and USB 2.0 port. The sport seats are covered in soft text trim with a premium fabric insert down the center. They have firm bolsters around your midsection and down by your thighs. The seats are height adjustable as well as reclinable, but no lumbar adjustability. However, they are very comfortable, so whether you are daily commuting or just honing around, these seats will keep you in place. The dash is laid down in a traditional fashion. It is not driver centric, which I personally like, since it keeps things fairly symmetrical whether you are the driver or passenger. However, the fake stitching and not so soft touch diminish the overall premium feel. I really like the circular design of the air vents. 
The housing, adjustment knob, and vent doors all complement each other, and look how cool it opens and closes. Rear visibility is good, but the rear headrests are a tad too tall, obstructing your vision towards the corners. The rear seats split in a 60-40 position. The Corolla has two cup holders in the front doors, two in the rear doors, two in the center console, and two in the rear center armrest for a total of eight cup holders. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, I did that. The first thing I noticed about driving this car is how well it rides on the 17-inch rims. Normally, this would be a recipe for disaster with all the road imperfections, but here it's not. Now, don't get me wrong, you're not riding on clouds of air. However, it's surprisingly smooth for what it is. Well done, Toyota. One of the coolest features about this car is sport mode. Press the sport button, and all of a sudden, the car becomes alive. The ECU fine tunes the steering and throttle and shifts become lightning quick. It's like having a dual clutch transmission, but it isn't. This car comes equipped with a CVTIS transmission, which basically means it doesn't have gears like a traditional automatic transmission. Instead, it uses a steel belt that expands and contracts between pulleys to shift. This dramatically improves efficiency, and most of all, no shift shock. The shifts are silky smooth, and I love it. However, CVTs aren't perfect. They are generally more fragile and more expensive to repair, and some people just don't like the feel. So much so, some manufacturers have gone to adding simulated gears to make their CVTs feel more like traditional transmission. And before you ask, Yes, this car has simulated gears. Fake news, fake gears. This is the world we live in. Another cool feature is the Lane Departure Alert System. As its name suggests, it alerts you when you start to drift outside of your lane. There are sensors at the top of the windshield that scan the road markings. When it detects you are drifting out of your lane, it sounds an alert and even nudges the steering wheel a bit to get you back on track. Very cool. So there you have it. All the value, reliability, and safety you'd expect from a modern day Corolla. Just not the good looks. So what do you think of the 2019 Toyota Corolla? Love it, hate it, own it? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for Final Drive. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can't spell famous without A-M-O-S. Perfect. Peace out.